Hello, welcome back to The Goodness Margin, the place where we find margin for the good things in life. Today, we're gonna to be talking about zone number four. This is the fourth zone in our home that we are minimizing, decluttering, organizing, and deep cleaning. If you've been following along, you've already done zones one, two, and three. And if you wanna catch up, those are gonna be linked in the blog post below. And then in the next two months, we'll be doing zones five and six. So this zone for my home is right when you walk in my home. Now, our home is close to 15 years old, and it's probably a layout of a lot of older homes where that there is what was intended to be the formal living room, the formal dining room. There's an entry hallway. I have a closet, a storage closet, or a coat closet, whatever you want to call it, and a half bathroom. This is the space I'm going to be focusing on this month. Now we've converted these rooms, the formal living room, we didn't have a need for a space like that. And so we put in some bookshelves, we have a media cabinet with the TV and the game system for my kids with a couch. So that's a library media room. And then to the left is what was the dining room, but it just really wasn't big enough. And so we moved that larger table here into the kitchen that has a small table in it, the piano. It's just an extra work room in our home. As I was going along in my minimalism journey, I realized as I got rid of things, some of the spaces in my home I had not been utilizing to their full potential. I had just been using them how I thought that they were supposed to be used. So I encourage you to look around your home. If there's a space that doesn't work for you, that dining room was the, it's a great example. It did not work as a dining room. So I was able to move the piano into it, which freed up some space in our living room. And we switched the small kitchen table out. And now we have a place for homework, for me to work at, and just a nice extra space in the room. It makes so much more sense. So this month, we're gonna be systematically moving through these spaces. When we get to each room, we will deep clean. We're going to be wiping down the baseboards, wiping down all the woodwork, the blinds, the windows, dusting and wiping down all of the furniture. If there is a piece of furniture that houses storage, we will be going through all of the things and also just taking the time to make sure that we are minimizing um, decluttering those rooms and using them to their full potential. Week one is the entry in the hall closet. Many times our entry area can be overlooked, especially for deep cleaning, because it's not something that we routinely think about except it's the first thing that people see when they walk into our homes. And so we really want this space to be clutter-free and to be inviting. In this space, I do have a small dresser that I put a candle and a lamp on in order to light the candle, turn the lamp on and make that space inviting. But I do use that for some storage. I keep some tablecloths and things like that. So I'm going to be going through that cabinet, pulling everything out and making sure that I do still use it. If not, I will donate it and let it go. And of course, I'll be deep cleaning that area and making sure that it's really clean. In that entryway, there also is a hall closet. Now, if you live somewhere where the, it is really, really cold a large portion of the year, you may need a coat closet. For us, we just have a few hooks that are near our garage door, and that way we can just hang our coats there for the few months out of the year that we actually need those. We did not need an entire coat closet, so I put a little shelving unit in there, and that is where that I have my daughter's toys. This way we have a way to immediately put those away. She can pull them out and play with them, but then we can clean them up and put them completely out of sight. If you don't have a space like that to store toys, then maybe you could look at some sort of an ottoman that opens that you could keep those toys in. But it's a really great thing to be able to completely clean up and it teaches your child, okay, we have all the toys out and now when it's time to clean up, this is our expectation for what it should look like. So when I go through this closet, I am also gonna go through her toys and be sure they're all still things that she uses. And in this closet, I also keep my vacuum cleaner and a few other cleaning supplies. I'll go through those and make sure those are things I also still use and still need. Week two of this zone is going to be the half bath. This is the bathroom that is downstairs. It's the only toilet that's downstairs. So it's the room that any of my guests are going to use. So I want to really be sure I deep clean this room. Now, I really don't have to do anything to declutter it because I don't keep anything in it other than the hand towel that we use. And in that hallway right around the corner where the little chest is, that's where I keep the extra toilet paper 
and the extra hand towels. But I do want to take the time to be sure this room is really deep cleaned and maybe check those hand towels. Make sure they're ones that are still look really fresh. It's only a few bucks to go and replace those. Week three is the library. If you don't have a specific place like that, maybe you could just take this time to go through the books wherever you keep your books on your bookshelf. Now we do have a lot of books. Believe it or not, if you've seen the photos of my bookshelves, we used to have two more bookshelves and we did get rid of those. We sold those when we moved that media cabinet into that room. Just because you're a minimalist, remember it doesn't mean that we're getting rid of everything. It just means the only things that we keep are the things that are really, really important to us. And books are really important to our family. My husband is a pastor, he studies a lot, and books are his thing. Those books are really important to him. Now he has taken the time to go through them and he's given away a lot of books. He's sold a lot of books, donated a lot, just to be certain that the ones that he does have are ones that he loves and uses. Last year, we did take the time to be sure that they were all organized really well, but I will be looking through my books and my children's books. Especially for kids' books, it's amazing how that they can quickly outgrow books. It'll be a favorite book that they have, but especially if they're in that age where they had board books, slowly those books begin to be out of the range that they're in and they're moving on to different books. I have a 14-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter, so it's a good age difference there. So as he grows out of books, I let him decide what books he wants to get rid of. As he gets rid of them, I decide, okay, is this something that I think my daughter will be soon growing into her? Or is this a book that I really enjoyed him having? And I want to be sure that she has. So I will keep a few of those on a shelf. It's kind of a transitional shelf there. But the biggest thing that I'm going to go through is her books and realizing that she is outgrowing books. And also kids can be really rough with books. Have they torn them up? Do we need to let them go? So we're taking this time to go through all of the books and then also really deep clean those bookshelves. I'll deep clean all of the furniture in there. And then we also have the media cabinet. Now this is divided into two halves. The first half is where we keep our games. And I will link in the blog post below how I organize our games. I have taken them all out of the original packaging because I felt like those boxes, they just tear up so quickly and they're really hard to stack. They're all different sizes. So we bought boxes that are all the same size. If you don't have the room for the plastic boxes like that, I also have linked some zipper bags. These are really great to keep games and puzzles in whenever the boxes start to get torn up. So we're going to go through those games. One thing that we usually do each time we go through our games is I talk to my kids and we look and see, is there a few games that we haven't played? Now, some of them may be like, hey, we don't like this game. Okay, let's donate it. Let's get rid of it and let it go. But if it's one that, hey, we haven't played this in a while. I wonder if we still enjoy it. We'll pull it out. And on the next family night, we'll be sure to play that game. And that's something fun for our family to do. And it may be a game. We bought this different version of Monopoly one time and we played it a couple times and realized we just absolutely did not enjoy it. So while we enjoyed our family time together, we decided to let that game go. So that's sort of a fun way when you go through your games, decide, hey, we haven't played these. We're gonna make ourselves play this game and then that way we can determine, it'll help us determine if we want to keep it or not. The other half of the media cabinet houses all of the things media related. And this is something that I have my son help me go through because honestly, I'm not exactly sure what some of these cords are, which is actually something I'm working through this year is being sure that every cord in the house is labeled. I do not want a random box of cords that I'm not sure what it goes to. Should we get rid of this? Cords are something you're kind of afraid to throw away because what if you need it? The good news is, is you can typically go on Amazon and find a replacement cord if you accidentally throw away the wrong cord. But one way to keep that from happening is to immediately when you get a new electronic, label the cord, and now we know exactly what device this goes to. So we're gonna take the time to go through that media cabinet, be sure that all of the things still function, we still use them. If not, we're gonna let them go. Week number four is my dining room, and it's still, we call it that room still, even though it's not technically used for that. Now I have zero storage in this room. We have a piano, it has a few photos and a lamp on it. I have a table that has a tray, it's my where I work. And so it has a few things, a cup of pins, things like that, that are related to work. And that's all that's in that room. So I am going to deep clean this room, but I'll also take the opportunity to come into my kitchen and to where I moved my dining room buffet into the kitchen area. 
So I will go ahead during this zone and go through that. Make sure I'm cleaning everything. Is everything in there things that I still use that I want to keep and that I want to use? So wherever you keep things related to your dining table or your dining linens, anything like that, take this time to go through all of that. One thing I like to think of when I'm looking at my tablecloths and my napkins and my serving pieces. I try to think of the biggest dinner party that I'm going to have, or when is the last time I have really used this? Am I truly going to use these napkins? Am I truly going to use this tablecloth? Am I truly going to use this platter? If not, I'm gonna benefit so much more from the free space that I have rather than holding on to that item. After we go through this zone four, we are over halfway finished with our decluttering, organizing, minimizing our entire home. Doesn't this feel really, really great? And again, if you've missed some of these zones, I'll have them linked below in that blog post. I know that as you go through your home, you will find more ways to add margin to your life for the good things. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you'll be notified when the next video goes live.